This little video is about heaps. My name is Alan Doran. Before you start, make sure that you understand the concept of an algorithm, the components of a complex algorithm, and you know about the data structure known as the tree. Also make sure you've had a look at the video on binary search trees, or you've read a textbook and understand what these are and how they're used. Just to remind you, sorting means to take some characteristic of a collection of objects and to arrange them in a particular order based on that characteristic. For instance, we can sort things in numerical ascending order, or by alphabetical order, or in some other way, such as the number of leaves on a plant. Also remember, this is a binary tree, in it we find each node has at most two children. Now this is a binary heap. It's a binary tree, so all the nodes have at most two children. Uh, but also you'll see that this heap is a container for numbers, and the numbers are stored in the nodes. If we look at this heap, we'll see that the smallest numbers are at the top of the heap. This is called a min heap. It is possible to have something called a max heap, which has the largest numbers stored in the nodes at the top of the tree, um, but for most of this little video we'll just be talking about min heaps, and when we say uh, something about min heaps, for instance that something is less than or greater than, then you can just reverse the uh, sign of that comparison for max heaps. So everything I say about min heaps applies in reverse to max heaps. Okay, now in the min heap, we see every value has as its children values that are greater than or equal to it. So, for instance, here in the root we can see the number 3. We can be sure in this min heap that as this is the root of the tree, 3 is the smallest number stored in this heap and everything beneath it in the tree must be bigger than it. Now if we go down, let's say, the left branch of the heap, and we see the number 5, we can be sure that everything beneath 5 will be greater than it. That is, all of 5's children must be greater than it. These are the properties of a min heap. Now, how do we build one of these heaps? It's a binary tree, as I said. We're going to build a min heap. We start with a node, obviously, the first thing we add. And in this case, we do a breadth first addition. That is, we fill up all of the children of this node in order from left to right. So now we've got two levels in our tree. Now this time, we're going to add a third level. We start from the left, and we work our way across to the right. Again, we start the leftmost, and we work our way across to the right. So what this means is, as we work from left to right, that the heap has full rows with two children for each node, except possibly in the last row. So for instance, what we've got here is a valid binary heap. The first three rows are all filled, and we're part of the way through filling the fourth row. And we continue in this direction, doing one after another rows, always from left to right in breadth first. Uh, direction. Okay, now let's build a binary heap with some numbers. The first one we want to add is 5. So obviously the 5 forms the root. Now remember that in a min heap, which is what we're building here, the smallest number is always the root. So here, of course, we've only got one number, 5 forms the root. It's the smallest, it's also the largest, but in this case that doesn't really matter. Now, we've done the 5. The 9 takes the leftmost subtree or subbranch from the 5. We're filling it up in left to right order. 3 takes the next position over on the right there. Now you think, hang on a second, is this actually a min heap? We see that the number 9 is greater than 5, so it's fair enough that it should be beneath it in the heap. But the number 3 is actually less than the number 5. It shouldn't, if this is to be a heap, be beneath it in the tree. 
3 should now be the root. So what we have to do is actually swap the 3 and the 5 to preserve this data structure as a heap. So once we've made this swap between these two nodes, we now have a heap once again. And this swapping process is how we keep the heap in sorted order. So now we want to add the next number in our list, which is a 6. It goes on the leftmost side of the leftmost side out here on the left. Now, 6 and 9, do we have a heap here? Well, think about it for a second. Is 6 less than 9? No, it's not. So therefore, we actually have to swap these two nodes to maintain this as a heap. So we do that, and now once again we've got a heap. The smallest number is 3 at the top. Underneath that we've got a row with 6 and 5, which are both greater than 3. Underneath that we've got a row which, is a row which contains 9. And 9 is greater than 6, its parent, and it's also greater than 3, its next ancestor. So this is a heap. The next number we want to add is 17. We add it in the next available place. Remember, going from left to right. Now here we haven't violated the condition of the heap. 17 is greater than 6, its parent, and it's also greater than 3, its next ancestor. So this is the right place for 17. Next time we add a node, we're going to add 21. We add it to the next available space. We're working left to right in row 3, and that ends up being on the left of 5. 21 is greater than 5, its parent, and 21 is also greater than 3, its next ancestor. So this is the right spot for 21, and we've built ourselves a binary heap. Now let's say we want to add another number 2. Now you can see, if you're thinking about heaps, immediately this is going to cause a problem. 2 is a small number. It actually needs to be the root of the heap. How are we going to get it there if the next place that's available is to the right of 5, over on the right-hand side of the slide? Well, we add 2 to the correct location, that is to the right of 5, because that's the next available spot. But, as you know, that violates the heap condition. So we actually have to swap the values 2 and 5 in our tree if we're going to keep this as a heap. So we do that. But now we notice the 2 is actually greater, uh, sorry, less than 3. So in fact we have to do a double swap here. First we swapped 5 and 2, and now we also have to swap 2 and 3. So we do this, and now we've maintained or re uh, attained, if you like, our heap. Now this process of doing swap and then swap and then swap is called percolating up the tree. So when we insert a new value, we always insert it at a leaf node, the next available leaf node. But if it's not in the right spot to maintain the sorted order of the heap, then we percolate it up the tree by swapping it with its parents until it finds its natural or correctly sorted location in the heap. Now the other thing that we can do with a heap is very quickly remove the minimum value or find the minimum value in the heap. Of course, because as we've said, the minimum value in the heap is the root. So we know straight away in this tree that we've just built that 2 is the minimum value in this heap. It's at the root. Now we can't just take 2 the node out of the tree because we're left with a tree without any connection at its base. So what we do is unbuild the heap in the reverse order to how we built it. That is the last leaf was the last thing added to this tree. It's down in the right corner there. And what we want to do is take the value from that last leaf, delete the node in which it's contained and put its value in the root after we take out the two. So we'll take out the two and we're about to delete five but first we put its value into the root as we just did and now we can remove that leaf node from the bottom right hand corner now we look at this and we think well remember it's a heap the smallest thing in the root uh, smallest node in the tree should be the root and we can see that five is not the smallest value in this heap in fact three is it's over on the right hand side so what we have to do here is, just as we did when we were inserting things, swap. So we just swap the 3 for the 5, like that, to restore the property that we're looking for, the sorted property of the heap. 
Now, in the case of a min heap, where the smallest numbers are at the top, we swap a node and its smallest child. In the case of a max heap, we'd swap a node and its largest child to maintain the heap property. Now, after we've removed that one, if we wanted to remove the three from the root of this heap, then the next leaf we would have to um, delete is the one here labelled last leaf and we put the 21 into the root and then we would swap things through until we'd finished. After that we'd remove the 17, then the 9, then the 5, then the 6 and so on, swapping things in order as we needed to to maintain the correct sorted state of the heap. So that's it for heaps. Just remember they're an ordered tree and all parents are smaller in the case of min heaps or larger in the case of max heaps than their children. They're built in bread first order and new numbers are always added at the leaves and then they percolate upwards by swapping with their parents until we've got a heap once again. We can remove the root of the tree. This will be the minimum value in the tree in the case of a min heap or the maximum value in the tree in the case of a max heap. And then we reverse the process by which we uh, assemble the tree by percolating things downwards. We swap values downwards in order to rebuild the heap after we've done um, a replacement of the root with the last leaf. That's it for heaps.